Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Northwest Church, the church on the hill on this beautiful, sunny Sunday morning, the second Sunday in Advent. I want to give a special welcome to all of those who are visiting with us, and uh, both in person, and if you're joining us online for the first time, welcome to you, and welcome to all of those who are returning. Welcome home. If you are here in the building, there are uh, black pads at the ends of the pews. If you would please uh, grab those and fill those out and let us know that you're here worshiping with us. If you're joining us online, you can go to nwumc.com slash connect. And you can let us know that you are joining us through that website. It is the second Sunday of Advent, and so I would like to invite uh, Jane and Roger forward to light our Advent candle for us. Good morning. Three thousand years ago, the prophet Isaiah shared his vision of lions lying down with lambs and humans beating their swords into plowshares and not learning war anymore. And we are still waiting. 2,000 years ago, John the Baptist was the voice crying in the wilderness and the angels over Bethlehem delivered the birth announcement of a baby who would be born to bring peace on earth. And we are still waiting. Sometimes it feels so foolish <clears throat> to light a peace candle every advent. Bombs are still dropping on Ukraine, and young Americans are still dying from senseless gun violence. And we are still waiting. But we who know Jesus continue to believe. We know Jesus can calm a raging sea by simply saying, peace be still. We know he can calm our fearful hearts when we think we can't go on. We know Jesus showed us how to conquer fear by the way he died non-violently and rose again victoriously. Because we have known his peace in our hearts, we are able to wait as long as it takes. And while we wait, we light the candle of peace to renew our allegiance to Jesus the Prince of Peace. <coughs> Please pray with me. Holy God of all people and of all creation, touch our troubled hearts with your spirit of holy peace. Remind us again that we are not called to passively wait for peace to miraculously appear. Human nature is too flawed for that to happen. We are not called to be peacekeepers who want only a lack of conflict and preservation for the status quo. Instead, you call us to be peacemakers, co-creators of a just and loving world order. Show us the way, Heavenly Parent, to make peace wherever you have planted us, whether we are refereeing a squabble between our children or solving a complicated situation at school or work. Let the peaceful ways of Jesus be our guide. Help us let go of things we cannot change so we can be your agents of peace 
and places where we can make a difference. May we act as we pray in the name, name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Sunday, December 18th. Volunteers are needed to donate egg casseroles and other breakfast items. Please see this week's Northwest Happenings email for the link to Sign Up Genius or look for the sign up sheet in the hall. Would you like to order a Christmas poinsettia in honor or in memory of a loved one? You can do so by asking an usher for an order card or by calling the church office. The cost is $10. This year, we are again collecting new, unwrapped gifts for the Christmas shop at the Church for All People Free Store. Gifts can be left in a bin in the hall no later than Thursday, December 8th. If you did not receive a copy of the wish list of suggested gifts last Sunday, please ask an usher. On the other side of the wish list is a reminder of the various outreach ministries available in December, including our Christmas families. New families will be added each week. Check out the tables in the hall for more information. The NEMAP pantry item for December is cereal. Donations can be left in the shopping cart in the hall. Thank you for your generous support of the NEMAP food pantry. Now let us continue with our worship. <coughs>
Church held its annual breakfast with Santa event. And thanks to so many people from our church and our community, families enjoyed a delicious breakfast and a visit to Santa's workshop. We are thankful for our partnership with Troop 200 and the Dublin Jerome National Honor Society for providing not only elf support, but cleanup support. Special thanks to Janine Gradeless and her team for once again planning and organizing Santa's workshop. It is such a God sighting to see so many youth involved in making this day so special. There was no charge for this event and so thanks to your generosity, families had an amazing time with their children and their grandchildren. Certainly, we want to continue to pray for peace all around the world. In our local congregation, please know that KC Fields had surgery on Monday and is recovering at home. We continue to pray for Wally Brewer, who has been diagnosed with multiple myeloma. As a congregation, we are in prayer for military and missionary personnel all over the world who will be separated from their loved ones in this holiday season. We pray for those who lack adequate resources for significant living, those who are in the midst of medical treatments, those awaiting surgeries, as well as those who are recovering one day at a time. We want to pray for people all around the world who are bullied just for being who they are. We pray for teenagers who are in conflict with their families, their parents, and others. And we pray for all who live in chronic pain. If you have a joy or a concern that you would like to share with our prayer team or church staff, you know, there are those connect cards in the pew racks in front of you in the building. And if you are worshiping online, you may go to nwumc.com slash connect and hit that request prayer button or share your concerns even in the comments section. 
Let's just take a deep breath. We trust that God is here. Let us pray. Ever present and ever loving God, we gather this morning in joyful expectation. Like children looking out the window and searching the night sky for the next snow day, our hearts stand up on tiptoe, looking for glimpses of peace to forever reign in our world. We're longing for that day when the wolf will lie down with the lamb, when strangers become good neighbors, and when enemies actually can become friends. Yet you know, O oh God, what keeps us apart and stuck in our predicaments. With disease in our bodies, <coughs> violence as a strategy for power, with neglect of our natural world, and with our rhetoric that divides and harms our whole world and all of creation is at war. We know that this is not what you intend or the prophets envision. So hear our confession, O God. And in this season of darkness, keep our eyes and our very souls open to the coming of the wonderful counselor, the one who will show us that the ways to greater peace cannot be achieved through weapons or judgment, but rather through the compassion that calls us together, that calls us to let go of our selfish ways and to serve the common good especially those who rarely get served at all. In these days of Advent, we prayerfully anticipate something different, something that through your spirit can only be done. So inspire us all to bring resolution to our conflict, to bring the light of Christ into every shadow of our fear, to bring healing and hope to bodies and communities, not to mention the warring and neglected parts of our world. Thank you, God, for sitting with us in these dark days, for encouraging us not to let our Christmas lights distract us from human need. Thank you for encouraging us to help as we can, but also to surrender <coughs> our control. And then grant us your strength, so that despite all circumstances, we still lean into your peace. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus, the one whose birth we are eager to celebrate. And it is in his name that we join our voices as one, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
scripture reading this morning is from the 11th chapter of the book of Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and will breathe and with the breath of his lips we shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. It will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you please pray with me? Gracious and loving God, maker of all that is and was and ever shall be, on this second Sunday of Advent, we long for peace. We long for the day to come and for your holy vision to be fulfilled. And God, even as we long and wait for this day, help us to see the ways in which we can become an active part of bringing it about. Now I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be truly pleasing and acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> About a year and a half ago, shortly after our dragon died, my wife decided it was time to get another snake. I say another snake because she had had one years before we met, and even knowing this about her, I still married her. <laughs> well, this time around, she decided on a ball python because according to her, they are the most docile of snakes and least likely to try to escape. She went with a male because they don't get quite as big as the females, and of course, they're lazier. <laughs> and so it is that Sir William Snakespear has come to live in our house in a glass locked tank in the corner of our living room. True to her word, he doesn't do much. But my wife, bless her heart, thinks he's cute. And she will die on that hill. Now, when my family found out we were getting a snake, at first they all said they wouldn't step foot across the threshold of our home. But one by one, they have come. And some have even spent the night without incident. To date, Sir William Snakespear has bitten people exactly zero times, which is far fewer times than I've been bitten by the cat. <laughs> or even the dog, mostly when trying to give them their medicine. And Sydney, my six-year-old stepdaughter, who fell perhaps only a few inches from the proverbial tree, will often request the task of, of misting the tank with a water spray bottle, you know, to keep the humidity up, 
But before she does, she will stick her entire head in the tank to look for Will. Just the other day, she asked if Santa knew we had gotten Will, and could we leave a stocking out for him just in case? <laughs> and in all of this, I just have to sit back and marvel at how far we've come from Genesis 3. <laughs> and I think that maybe snakes, on the whole, have gotten a bad rap because of just that one story. Indeed, popular theology has made the snake synonymous with the devil himself, even though nowhere in the story is the snake identified as the devil, and nowhere else in the Bible is he explicitly identified as Satan. But the image of the snake as evil and wicked continues to captivate. In fact, when I was growing up, there was a brand new fantasy novel series that began to take the world by storm, you know, a little franchise called Harry Potter. Perhaps you've heard of it. My grandmother used to take us cousins to Barnes & Noble on release day eve for the party where we'd stay up until midnight chatting with our friends and anxiously awaiting the moment we could go up to the counter and pick up our pristine pre-ordered volumes only to rush home and voraciously absorb roughly one half to three quarters of the book by flashlight in one insomnious evening. Believe it or not, several of my friends were forbidden from reading the books, even though there are actually some quite major Christian themes in them, especially at the end, but I won't spoil it for the youngsters out there who haven't read it yet. Now, for those of you who don't know, the main antagonist of the story, the stand-in for the devil, if you will, he who must not be named, Voldemort, is depicted as having snake-like characteristics. He has a monstrous pet snake at his beck and call. He hails from Slytherin House, one of four houses at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, the mascot of which is a snake. Meanwhile, the hero of the story, the titular Harry, is in Gryffindor House, which has as its mascot a lion. And while the Ravenclaws and the Hufflepuffs are totally irrelevant, most of the series is set up as a conflict between the lions and the snakes. And unfortunately, I'm afraid that is how many, many Christians see the world. That is how many people in general see the world, but particularly Christians, who often seem to view history as nothing more than one giant conflict between the lion and the snake. A constant battle between good and evil. And although that idea makes for some exciting stories, it's not necessarily a truly Christian one. You see, back in the days of the Roman Empire, Christianity wasn't the only new popular religion in town. Among others, there was a religion called Zoroastrianism. I'll say that five times fast which taught that there are two primary spiritual forces, a good God and an evil God, who are constantly battling with one another for control of the universe. And certain creatures, such as snakes, were created by the evil God in response to the creation of the good God. Ultimately, Zoroastrianism teaches that the good God will defeat the evil God on a judgment day. Now that's an oversimplification. There are actually still a few practicing Zoroastrians out there to this day. But you can maybe see how such a religion had some influence on early Christian thought. The biblical Satan, though, is not an evil god. Satan is a created being, just like everything else. He fell from grace. And he did not create the snakes. Jury's still out on the mosquitoes. <laughs> yes, he has influence. And yes, we ought to be on guard and wary of falling for the lies he tells us. But good friends, our story is not a story of good versus evil. Our story is a story of falling and getting back up again. 
being pulled back up again, given a lifeline, a promise of redemption, of redemption and amazing grace. And we are still waiting for all of this to be brought to completion. In our scripture reading today, Isaiah speaks of a hope that he has, and it is a hope for a future without violence or conflict. A hope for a time when the poor and the lowly are treated justly and brought into equality with others. When wickedness is no more and righteousness is the word of the land. When lion and calf and leopard and lamb and child and wolf and bear and snake will lie down together. And there will be peace. And I have to admit, and maybe you will admit with me, I'm getting tired of waiting on the world to change. Amen? I'm getting tired of waiting on the bullies to stop bullying, on the thieves to stop stealing, on the greedy to stop hoarding, on the liars to stop lying. I'm getting tired of waiting on the wickedness and the violence to come to an end, and I, too, often wish that the lion could just come down right now and kill all the snakes. But then where would Isaiah's vision be of a child reaching into the adder's den? Of flesh and scales coming together in a holy and truly peaceful moment. And I have come to realize that the end goal for the God of the universe is not to snuff out evil beings, but rather to bring all beings into harmony and reconciliation with each other. That's why when he came, he didn't snap the Romans into oblivion. That is why when he walked this earth, to my knowledge, he didn't step on any of the beloved snakes he created. And that is why, to date, even though he could, easily, he has not destroyed the adversary, the one who fell from grace. Now I know what all is written in the scriptures and in Revelation about the day to come, and I'm very curious to see how the actual events will compare to the vibrant and often violent imagery of that book. And I don't doubt that there are those who will choose not to live forever in peace and harmony and obedience to the Creator. But I also don't doubt that our God is good and patient and in control and will do whatever it takes, even leaving the 99 to seek out and save the fallen. Now it is true that we are still waiting for this day of universal peace to come. But here is the good news, friends. The root of Jesse has already arrived. He is already here standing bright as a beacon to the nations. His words have struck deep into the earth, and his teachings still to this day put an end to all manner of wickedness. He is the first fruits of this promised hope, the guarantee that one day we will have full universal peace. Truly, this vision of peace is not so very far off if you know what to look for. I don't know if we're closer to it or further away from it than we were 10 years ago. And I don't know how long, oh Lord, it will take to fully arrive. But I do know that as long as we continue to see our world in black and white, us or them, red or blue, Ohio State versus Michigan, lion or snake terms, we will still be waiting, still waiting on a victory.
vision that includes the snakes, the ones we have lumped in with the devil just because of a story from their past. So may I suggest something, brothers and sisters, perhaps it is not the snakes of the world, the ones we see as wicked, who are keeping us from this vision of peace. Perhaps instead it is our own perspective, our own desire to draw lines between who is in and who is out, our own judgment on what is cute and what or who is dangerous. As the old hymn goes, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. So, maybe my wife isn't so crazy after all for bringing a snake into our home, caring for it, calling it cute, and making him a part of our family. Maybe She's just living a little farther along into the kingdom of God than I am. Now that said, whatever you do, for the love of all that is good and pure, don't say anything to her about getting a lion. <laughs> Amen? As we uh, come to our time of communion, I hope that uh, if you're online, you have a solid or a, and a liquid to, to share. And if you are here in the building, you've got one of the little communion cups. If not, please raise your hand and one of our ushers will bring one to you. I hear you're already starting on that. That's good. You know, it'll take the whole uh, time in the, the words of institution and the prayer to get this thing open. So, um, if, if you're new to this, uh, let me just let you know that there's the wafer is under the clear plastic here, and then under the foil is the juice. As we come to this table, we remember that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, did not come down to wage war against the Roman Empire or against any of the snakes of the day. He came and he died on the cross for you and for me and for everybody else. And so we remember this sacrifice. And on the night before he willingly gave his life, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gathered around the table with his friends and taking the bread, he gave thanks and blessed it and broke it. He said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. He said, take and drink all of you. This cup represents a new covenant in my blood which is poured out for all of you. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For very truly I tell you, I shall not again drink from the fruit of the vine until that time when I will share it with all of you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you great thanks for these simple gifts of bread and cup. Bless now these elements of grace that they might nourish not only our bodies but also our souls, and by your Holy Spirit, God, make us one with each other, one in Christ and one in service to all the world, until Christ comes again, and we feast with him. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the body of the Lord, broken for you and for me, and the cup of salvation poured out for all. Let us partake together.
while the children are coming in to partake in Holy Communion with us. I want to invite us now to enter a time of offering. Through our communion, we have offered ourselves as Christ offered himself to us. And now it is time to think about our further response, how we want to do that to God's word and the ways of the kingdom. So we're going to pass the plates for the first time since pre-COVID. And we're grateful for the ushers who have stepped forward to do that. So, will the ushers please come forward? <clears throat> again that only your love lived out in the caring ways of your people will truly lead to everlasting peace. Thank you therefore for many opportunities to offer some of our resources and ourselves in service through this church. We give a oh God in gratitude for all that you have given us. In Jesus' name, we pray. <coughs> Amen. Our final hymn is Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Let's sing together. <laughs> Thank you. 
friends, it has been such a joy to worship with all of you wherever you may find yourselves on this beautiful Sunday morning. As a reminder, if you are joining us online, you can share a prayer or an offering by going to nwumc.com slash connect. Uh, and if you're here in the building, if you have a prayer or concern you'd like to share, you can drop those in the box on your way out. Now let us go with these words. I am not suggesting that you need to go out and add a snake to your family. However, may God grant us each a shift in our perspectives so that we might come to see in new light the light of Christ that which previously caused us fear and those who previously we have drawn outside of our borders. Go with the love of Christ and hope for that vision of peace to come where on that day lion and snake and all people shall come together, and there will be peace. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>